How can you digitalize testers using AI? What free RPA tool has just been recently discontinued? And how to use the resource object model pattern? Find out in this episode of the Automation and DevSecOps News Show for the week of March 12th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. Are you looking to take your automation project to the next level? Look no further than Apple Tools and their visual AI validation testing. Trust me, it's a game changer. Plus, you could try it out for yourself by creating a free account now. Just click on the link in the comments below and see the difference for yourself. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and get alerted every time I release a new Test Guild new show. First up, automation news. Anyone that's ever ran web UI tests know the pains of locating web elements. And if that's you, I have a resource that you definitely need to check out. And this is a free webinar by the folks at Apply Tools. They're going to go over how do you write a good CSS selector? Is XPath always the wrong choice? What about custom attributes or text? And a bunch of other helpful tips. And it's going to be led by two thought leaders in the automation testing space. We have Christian Broman, who is the creator of WebDriver.io. And we have Philip, who is a Cypress expert, and the one and only Andy Knight. So I mentioned this last week, but if you still haven't registered, I highly recommend you do it now before it's too late. To me, it's always sad news when an open source solution or a free tool is discontinued. And so with a heavy heart, I'm here to announce that Tag UI has been discontinued. And I just noticed the other day, under the GitHub repository, it says, notice the AISG team is discontinuing the maintenance and support of TAG UI. As of Q4 2023, they're no longer going to provide updates or support. And unfortunately, this is probably one of the few free RPA tools that I found. So it's really disappointing to see this. So if this is you, if you're using TAG UI, uh, check out more news in the first comment down below to see how it impacts you. Do you want to help shape the future of contract testing? Well, I found a way that you can. So Yosef mentioned that the PAC Flow team is conducting research on contract testing with an event-driven architecture context, and they want to hear from you. More specifically, they're looking for integrating tightly with Async API to bring you all the great benefits of PAC along with the benefits that specification-driven workflows can provide. And they have multiple ways you can participate to help drive if this is an initiative they should get into. First one is a quick survey. You could schedule a Zoom call with the PAC team. You could join the developer preview program, or you can vote or comment on their public road card. So here's a great way to get involved in the community and also help shape the future of future contract testing functionality. And you can check this out in the first comment down below. What is digitalizing testers, especially using AI? Well, I came across this from a post by Tariq King pointing to Jason Arbin talking about digitalizing testers. So the post Tyreek linked to was Jason Auburn's a powerful feature of AIs based on expert testers is coming to an agile team near you and you can sign up to be part of the beta now. And the article goes into detail of what is digitalizing testers, how you can sign up for the beta, how it's trained on public data, how you can learn from the best testers in the world. For example, how you can generate API tests using the Tyreek bot, generate Java Selenium tests by the Angie Jones bot, and it goes over how humans are still needed, the credibility of AI, and digitizing yourself to bring your AI expertise to work every day to the world. All right, Jason Auburn's always working on something cutting edge, and this is definitely something you should register for or be part of the beta, because I think it could be something that could take off in the future, at least get you more involved in what AI can and cannot do within the testing space. And thank you once again, Jason, for your innovation in software testing. So a very popular QA consultancy, QA Consultants, which has been around for at least 20 years, has recently been acquired. And thank you, James Pulley, for pointing this out to me. So the announcement is all about how QA Consultants have been acquired by Alton, a global engineering and IT service leader in the acquisition strengthens their reach and allows them to bring further value and capabilities to their customers. What I really think is interesting about this acquisition is the company that acquired QA Consultants is in the software engineering field. So they probably have heard or had or know there's a lot of issues with testing and quality. They actually found a company that can help them implement better quality and testing throughout different consulting services that they already provide. So if you're a tester, do automation, it shows there's really a need for people like you 
in the world. And that's why this company was acquired. So to me, it's just a good sign to say, hey, if you're a tester, it's a good place to be because there's actually high demand for you and your skills. At least that's how I read it. And speaking about being an in-demand tester, one way to really always be in demand is always be up on the latest and greatest and always upskilling yourself. And one way to do that is free webinars. I don't know if you know this, but the Test Guild has at least every week or every other week, it's been a free training webinar for you. And to find that, all you need to do is go to testguild.com and you can see our upcoming webinars that we have taken place. One is around API testing with the folks from Karate. We have the lowdown on test automation in 2023. And also tomorrow, if you're watching this last minute today, you can check out our webinar on scaling your automation with model-based test generation, which is a hot topic. So join us at any of the test skilled webinars and hope to see you there. Next up, performance and site reliability news. So what is a reusable performance testing project architecture? Well, this next article goes over in detail all about it. And this is posted on the K6 site. And it talks about load testing made simpler with resource object model, how it helps with large scale projects, has a great demo with the code examples, how to implement the resource object model pattern, how to build a strong foundation, and a whole lot of other performance awesomeness. And you should definitely check that out as well. Do you struggle with Kubernetes optimization, especially if you're in SRE of performance? Well, I have a solution that you should definitely check out. It just became available to the public for general availability. So Amir mentioned that they were super excited to have them reach this milestone. I always love finding new tools. So if you don't know what perfect scale is, it helps you eliminate the chaos of KA optimizations. And this article just goes over why this is important, what problems it solves, what the dashboard looks like, and the different, different features and functionalities it has to help you with your KA management. So definitely check this out. And let me know what you think. Next up, security testing news. So if you're a tester, you probably have to deal with the APIs. How about, do you do security testing for your APIs? If not, here's a resource you should definitely know more about and how you can actually contribute to the upcoming new release of this resource. And this was posted by Tanya, how the OWASP API top 10 is coming out very soon. And right now it's in a draft version. It has tons of comments in the issues section on GitHub but most of them are vendor focus. So if a vulnerability is not picked up by an automated scanner, it still needs to be on the list and you can make your voice heard by commenting on the issues and she posts where to do that. So here's your chance once again to contribute to the testing and security OWASP community and you can do it by clicking on that link in the first comment down below. So it's been a while, but we finally have a follow the money news segment for you. And this is how Cubis raised $7 million to make DAP development more effective, secure, and scalable. As I always mention, as I mentioned, I think already is I love new tools and you can actually check out what Cubis is all about and how raising this money helps. And the article goes into detail, not only why this investment was needed, but why despite incredible advances in W3 technology, DAP developers are still forced to cobble together custom infrastructure from incompatible languages, protocols, and security solutions. And so they spend long hours trying to make sense of low-level details of where and how their dApps will execute, create an industry-wide gap or drag on developer productivity. And worse, the status quo gives developers thousands of opportunities to make devastating mistakes, especially uh, exposing things to security and things like that. So definitely a tool you should check out if this resonates with you. It also is, to me, an indicator of technologies that people are investing in. So obviously W3. So if you're not into W3 yet or how to test or how to apply security to W3 type of development, here's your chance to take a deep dive into a certain company that does it to learn more for yourself. And for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head over to the links in the first comments down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Apply Tools free account offer and discover how to take your automation testing to the next level leveraging visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild New Show. I'm Joe, and my mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end -end full stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.